I'm going to talk about my journey from being a musician and teacher to becoming a software developer and how I made the transition. So I hope what I talk about here helps inspire people who maybe want to change career later in life to feel encouraged to do so. So I studied music and languages at college and in three years I had a bachelor's degree in arts. Afterwards, I wasn't sure what to do with myself. I had some music and some Italian. So I decided to go to Italy and start teaching English and seeing what I can make of my music career. Now my music skills were still very basic at this time despite the three year degree. So I decided to start practicing. I figured, oh, I have to learn jazz to become very good. Personally, this might have been a mistake. Nevertheless, this is what I started doing. Eventually, I started trying to apply to jazz colleges and uh, I was struggling to get in. I was struggling to spend the time to play that much music. So during my time applying to these jazz colleges, I started to see a niche in where I was living and I saw a potential for an app. It was an events app. I was very naive at the time and I figured, oh, I'll just learn the code and write up this app. I realized I couldn't do it alone. So a friend of mine who was a developer said, yeah, sure help out and we started trying to code it now this time I knew nothing about coding I figured right I'll do the front end JavaScript and CSS and things it'll be on mobile so actually it was react native and there'll be a web app blah 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 but um, <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing um, the only reason I made any progress was probably mostly because my friend was really helping me out he just I think was happy to help someone learn the code and he was really showing me the ropes of, of the basic you know what uh, operating system you should use and how do you even compile something something to a mobile. Yeah, this was really eye-opening to me and I naively thought we could complete this app and of course it was a lot more work than anticipated. Never got completed, but maybe I could show you some clips of what it was uh, going to be here. Uh, there might be some code still left lying around. This made me realize, okay, I need to I need to learn proper coding. And so my friend at the time was learning Rust and I was like, wow, Rust, that sounds interesting. Um, but I was too kind of afraid to dive into it. I heard it was very hard and there was a, a lot of things like concepts that hadn't quite understood yet. And so I, just, I realized I was missing a lot of knowledge and I needed some way to really get to the next level in programming. And so I started applying to colleges in Germany, uh, four year degree courses, but my German wasn't good enough and I messed up my application process. And I kind of realized as well, four years is a long time to go back to college. I'd already spent three years at college. I didn't want to spend another four just to come out with an undergraduate. Um, and I found this course in Ireland where you can do, um, as a postgraduate, which I your graduate course in one year where they take all the essentials of the course and, and put it into one year and so you jump around from first year classes and second year and fourth year classes all in one year and so I applied to this and luckily for this crappy app I had kind of built they accepted me and so yeah I still knew not much and they accepted me purely for the um, potential I mean the, the app was really useless and yeah we started from zero in this course and we started learning C we started learning a bit of Java and we started learning SQL and, and all of these things and operating systems and you know all your basics you would have in, in a course we did learn some data structures and things and but we were cramming it all in really fast <laughs> which was a struggle because one one moment you're in a first year class and it's like oh this is fine the next moment you're in like a third or fourth year class learning about uh, project management or operating systems or something and you're just like whoa I made it true and uh, in the end I did very well I was very happy with it and eventually I landed a job and the job was in mainframe systems so it had nothing to do with what I learned but it was still my first step into uh, professional software development and this is where things got interesting um, I realized that the you know what you do coding at home is very different to what you do in a corporate environment. Um, corporate environment has a lot to do with teamwork and working together with other people. And, and it was interesting for me, but I was, I was still in the back of my head, I was thinking about my friend and how he's learning Rust. And I was like, I still want to figure that out. And so I started looking into Rust in my free time and I started learning it and trying to get good at it. And eventually I landed another job at a place called Gridlock and it was the complete opposite of General Motors, which was a large corporation with lots of, you know, maintaining old code. Now suddenly I was in a startup where we were building the system from scratch and we're writing it Rust and using a lot of new technologies. It was a blockchain company. And that's where I started getting my first professional Rust development experience. Along the way, I learned lots of things. I learned, you know, in college, we did a lot of uh, SQL and, you know, we learned about operating systems and deadlocks and, you know, race conditions and all of the basic things you would learn in, in college. Um, 
And by the time I landed my first job, I mean, it was still just one year experience, despite how much we crammed into things. So the next year of working was really where I started to try up my game and to really start to push what I knew. And that's when that's learning Rust was a big part of that. And then actually developing on Rust was really where I felt like I excelled even further because it was, a, as a startup, it was, you were, I was really involved in a lot of parts of the system and it meant um, figuring out uh, the bigger picture, which I think a lot of developers don't even get a chance to do it uh, ever, um, which is which is amazing and it leads me to where, where I am now. Yeah, my journey as a developer is by no means over. I'm still learning lots of things and there's, I think, in, as everyone knows, programming is an endless pit of learning. But yeah, that's been my career so far in programming. And my main point here is that, that I really had no idea what I was doing at the start. I just decided, oh yeah, this is something I want to look into. This is something I wanted to do. And I just went for it. And programming was always a slight interest for me. Even when I was doing music, I was uh, doing electronic music. I, I think technically my first language was Max MSP, which is like this GUI language for creating synthesizers. As long as you just have a, a kernel of interest in the area, um, there's nothing stopping you from learning it. Even at, I started at the age of about 24, 25, um, and you could start much older. I know people who started at 28 or 30. Actually, I know people who started in their 40s. They changed career just fine, and this idea that you stop learning after a certain age is, is not entirely true. I mean, it depends on how much effort you put in. I mean, if you stop putting effort into learning new things, you will stop learning new things. Yeah, that's been my story, so uh, talk to you later. And uh, subscribe, like, if you wanna hear more. Uh, we do lots of Rust development around here. Bye-bye.